Today we'd like to talk about airflow. Too much airflow across the heat exchanger of the furnace can actually cause the flue gas to condense and it will run down the flue pipe, which will cause deterioration. Too little airflow can cause the heat exchanger stress, which would shorten the life of it. On most of your furnaces, you will find on the nameplate inside the furnace, it lists a temperature rise. So today we'll take a temperature rise across the furnace and see if it's within the manufacturer specified range. Okay, what I have is just a basic volt ohm meter, amp meter, and we have a K-type temperature sensor with it. So we're going to take the temperature rise on this furnace. We're gonna start off with the return air. Uh, you would like to take your return air temperature as close to the cabinet as possible. So let's see what temperature we have. So we're at about 84 degrees out here today in the return air. And the supply air, if you take the temperature too close to the heat exchanger, or above the evaporator coil, it will give you a false reading. You will actually read radiant heat in the furnace, which will throw off the calculation that we are trying to do. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so we're about 139, all right? Now, that's gonna throw your reading off a little bit. So what we would like to do is be a short distance from the the heat exchanger or the coil. So if you were doing this in a house, we would probably say go to the first register off of the ductwork, okay? So let's just kind of get in the airstream here and see what difference this makes. So we're gonna come out about 111, 112. It's gonna jump around a little bit with the air movement, all right? So now that we've got the supplier temperature we will subtract the return air temperature. That will give us the temperature rise across the furnace. Now what we wanna do is we wanna check the temperature rise on the nameplate. So let's look at the furnace. And this says 30 to 60 degree temperature rise across the heat exchanger. So we know that we're within range and we will take these numbers, plug them in the formula in the book, and we will determine the amount of CFM, cubic feet of air per minute, moving through this furnace. However, there is one thing that we do have to add. There is a small amount of heat generated by the blower motor. That will actually add to the load in the furnace so don't forget to add that in. That might change your numbers just a little bit. Um, and we can do it both ways so that you see if there's much of a difference or not. Probably not gonna change it a whole lot, but let's take a look and see how it comes out anyway. Now we're going to approximate the load that the actual blower motor is adding to the temperature rise of the furnace. So one simple way to do that is we can simply take the applied voltage, which in this case is 120 volts to the blower motor, and then we can take the amp draw, and we know that volts times amps equals watts, so let's take an amp draw and see what we have. And I'm going to just connect this to the common wire on the blower, and clamp this around, and see what kind of an amp reading we get. So right now, this is drawing just a little over five amps, all right? So all we need to do is multiply 120 times five. After we do that, we know that one watt equals 3.413 BTUs. So in this case, so we took the amp draw and we know that the blower was drawing about five amps and we have 120 volts. So 120 volts times the five amps gives us 600 watts. So we would take 600 times 3.413 BTUs per watt. That gives us an additional load of about 2,048 BTUs. So when we figure the temperature rise, 
and we do the BTU calculation in here, which we haven't got to yet. We will add the 2048 and see what we get. We had the temperature rise off the furnace. What we need to do next is we need to calculate the BTUs on the furnace. This furnace has an 80,000 BTU input and it's 80% efficient. So what we would do is multiply 80,000 times 0 0.80 that would give us the actual output of the furnace, which is 64,000 BTUs per hour. We are going to add the load of the fan motor, which is an additional 2,048 BTUs. This will give us a total BTU output on the furnace of 66,048 BTUs. Now that we have all of our information, we're going to go ahead and do this calculation. And CFM is cubic feet per minute. QS is actually the quantity in sensible BTUs. And 1.08, that is a fixed number that never changes, times temperature difference. The temperature difference was simply the difference between the supply air and the return air temperature. So if we do that calculation, we come up with 1.08 times 30. It's going to give us 32.4. We will divide that by the output in BTUs, which is 66,048. After we do the math, you see that we have 2,038 cubic feet of air per minute moving through that furnace. Whenever we're trying to troubleshoot a furnace, we're having some airflow problems, or we simply want to determine if I have enough airflow per ton of air conditioning, that is an excellent troubleshooting tool to use.